I want to thank you for standing up for me alongside your Palestinian sister. I want to thank you and to let you know that in the world that we live in, peace is possible. Only when women, women of integrity and faith, stand up for the future of their children. Congratulations. It is my hope that you will continue to battle for peace in a constructive way. And I look forward to the day that I will come and join you. Thank you for the children of Israel. Thank you for the children of Palestine. Thank you. Peace. Shalom. I'd like to welcome everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the entrance of the Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, the Honorable Anita Neville. My name is Rabbi Ben Arosh. I will be the MC for this evening. And I'd like to call on Aaron Graves from the Gray Academy of Jewish Education to sing the Canadian anthem. strong and free from far and wide O oh Canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free O oh Canada we stand on guard for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure at this time to invite the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba to bring greetings. Thank you, Rabbi. Good evening, everyone. Dear friends, fellow Manitobans, today we're gathered in remembrance and in deep sadness to honor the life of a distinguished Winnipegger. As Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, I join you in mourning for Vivian Silver, a peacemaker, a leader, and an inspiration to many, a beloved friend and family member to many gathered here tonight. We live in a time when the most horrific images of the world can be beamed into our homes 24 hours a day. We live in a time of increased radicalization and of polarization driven by the algorithms of social media. And of course, we live in a time of increased anti-Semitism around the world and unfortunately right here in Winnipeg. It would be easy to give in to despair it would be easy to say there is no solution, no way to bring people together to resolve disagreements through, di through dialogue. But today, as we gather to remember Vivian Silver, it is our responsibility to honor her vision by avoiding despair. 
I never met Vivian Silver, but I certainly wish I had. I have read that this Winnipeg-born peace activist, and I quote, never gave up on people. I have heard that she insisted at all times that there's always hope. Vivian Silver worked to make a better and more just world possible. She co-founded an important peace movement. She built bridges of understanding. How can we pay tribute to a woman who lived her values so profoundly and whose murder was such a cruel denunciation of those values? We can work for a culture of listening and understanding. We can build bridges in our own neighborhoods and communities. And we can teach our children to hold hope close in their hearts. It is unlikely that anyone here has a plan to create world peace, but perhaps world peace is the sum of billions of small acts of peace. Perhaps in that way, we can help Vivian Silver's vision become closer to reality. May we all find peace in our hearts and offer kindness to others at a time when the world needs it so desperately. Merci, thank you, Megwitch, and shalom to all. Welcome to everyone. On October 7th, Israel was brutally attacked by Hamas terrorists who infiltrated Israel. And on that day, 240 hostages were taken and 1,200 precious souls were murdered in cold blood. Today, we pay tribute and remember one of those souls, Vivian Silver, who grew up here in Winnipeg. I want to thank Vivian's two sons who are in attendance today, Yonatan and Chen, and also Vivian's sister, Rachel Gamliel, and her brother, Neil Sil Silver, who is, who is here, and also family members. Hamakom yenachem etchem, betoch shar avalei tzion v'yerushalayim, may the Almighty comfort you among the other mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. I would also like to thank the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg and its staff for organizing this event. At this time, I'd like to call on the new president of the Federation, Paula Parks, to bring some greetings. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and dear friends, welcome. Welcome to this gathering, a moment of unity, remembrance, of honoring a life that illuminated the path towards peace and understanding. We stand together as a community united in our grief today, not merely to mourn the loss of a remarkable soul, but to celebrate the enduring legacy of Vivian Silver, Zichrona Livracha. Vivian embodied a tireless dedication to peace and justice. Her life story was one of unwavering commitment to bringing divides, fostering harmony, and advocating for equality. She was a beacon of hope in a world amid geopolitical circumstances that often appeared to be hopeless. Vivian was tragically taken from us during Hamas's terrorist attacks of October 7th a loss deeply felt by all who knew her and by those impacted and inspired by her incredible work. Her absence is profoundly felt, yet her spirit endures in the profound impact she made, not just in our hearts, 
but in the lives of countless individuals who she touched. Vivian's journey, which began right here in Winnipeg, eventually tra traversed borders and transcended boundaries. From her pivotal role at the Arab Jewish Center for Empowerment, Equality, and Cooperation, to her founding involvement with Women Wage Peace, Vivian strived to build bridges among communities in Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. Her words, her actions, and her unyielding determination were catalysts for change. She challenged norms and fearlessly stood for what she believed was right. Vivian's legacy extends beyond borders, beyond political divides, embodying the belief that peace is not just a distant dream, but an achievable reality. Vivian's compassion, her empathy, and her resolute pursuit of peace serve as a guiding light, urging us to carry forward her vision for a better future. In her memory, let us continue her legacy of bridge building, understanding, and striving for a world where we all know peace. Thank you, every one of you, for being part of this evening's tribute to Vivian Silver, a woman whose legacy will forever resonate in our hearts and the minds of our community and, the people, and in the people around the world. May her memory forever be a blessing to all of us. We'll just direct everybody to the screen for a tribute uh, video. And we begin with that breaking news out of the Middle East. An Israeli-Canadian peace activist has been confirmed dead. For more on that, let's go to CBC's Ellen Morrow in Jerusalem. Ellen, what are we learning tonight? Well, really tragic news tonight, Diane. CBC News reached out to Vivian Silver's son, Jonathan Zygin, uh, to confirm this news. And at first, all he sent was a broken heart emoji and that really sort of said it all uh, and then he gave a bit more uh, information saying that his mother's remains were actually found uh, early on after the October 7th attacks uh, in Kibbutz Beri in the south of Israel where she lived but that they've only just now been identified and that speaks to the brutality of that day that here we are more than a month later and investigators are still just being able to now confirm firm identities. Before this was confirmed tonight, it was thought that perhaps she could be among uh, the more than 200 people who were taken hostage by Hamas. And there was actually a rally planned trying to get uh, Vivian Silver and, and other hostages back that was planned for Friday. We were going to go to that rally. Uh, now we have this tragic news tonight. Uh, Vivian Silver was a very well-known Canadian-Israeli peace activist, and we'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. Uh, over the last few weeks, her son, Jonathan, has been doing many interviews, uh, trying to keep his mother uh, front of mind. And we can play a clip um, from one that he did uh, really in the days after the October 7th attacks with Adrian Arsenault. She's a woman of small stature, but in spirit, she's a giant. Um, she dedicated her life to uh, peace work. Uh, she came to Israel 50 years ago, and since then she was just involved in uh, uh, activities to end the occupation and to solve the conflict between Israel and Palestine. And you can hear the love for his mother uh, in that clip. On the day of the attacks, October 7th, Vivian Silver and her son were actually speaking on the phone, and then he started to hear gunshots. Uh, they switched to WhatsApp 
before the communication stopped. And now we have uh, this tragic news. Uh, in the last few weeks, Jonathan did return to Kibbutz Berry. He said he wanted to see if there were any signs there that his mother may be alive. And what he found were her shattered reading glasses. Oh, very, very sad event. But now, Ellen, what more can you tell us about Vivian Silver, who she was and what she did during her lifetime? Well, Vivian Silver was born in Winnipeg. She moved here to Israel in 1974 and dedicated her life to peace work, as we heard from Jonathan in that clip, trying to establish peace uh, in this fraught region. After the 2014 war in Gaza, she founded, she co-founded an organization called Women Wage Peace, all about trying to create a peace between Palestinians and Israelis. She ran different initiatives for people uh, from Gaza uh, who were working in Israel. She helped transport uh, cancer patients from Gaza here to Jerusalem for treatment. Um, she really dedicated her life to peace work. Just in the, in the few days before the October 7th attacks, she was here in Jerusalem at a peace rally that she helped to organize, a, a peace march. And in the last few weeks, we've heard Jonathan really talk about his mother's work and talk about how peace is needed now. He's not in favor uh, of Israel's offensive into Gaza calling for uh, negotiations for peace, saying that's what his mother would want. And for that reporting, that's the CBC's Ellen Morrow in Jerusalem. I'd like to now call on uh, Vivian's two sons, Yonatan and Chaim, to say a few words. Our mother made her home in Israel 50 years ago. Nevertheless, she continue, continued all her life to embody Canadian values, pursuing social justice for all people, promoting gender equality, and always, always favoring reconciliation over fighting and peace over war. Since October 7th, we have witnessed the rapid transformation of our mother into a symbol. Her political legacy has undoubtedly touched the hearts of many. We have always been proud and respectful of Vivian Silver, the public figure. Awestricken by her unwavering struggle for a better world and her inspiring achievements. But for us, she will always remain a loving mother and grandmother. She would march for her causes at noon and tuck us into bed at night. She would arrange encounter groups between Israelis and Palestinians in the morning and inquire about our feelings after we came home from school. She would orchestrate international peace rallies during the week and bake elaborately shaped cakes for her grandchildren's birthdays. She was a woman of the world but she had unbendable roots in her family, friendships, and community. Growing up, it was made clear to us that family is important. The sheer, that sheer distance should not act as an obstacle to maintaining strong ties with close and extended family alike. Winnipeg was a home away from home spending summers with our Baba and Zeta, cousins and all our extended family was something of great importance to her. And we have grown to cherish these times and look back at them fondly. Coming here to remember and grieve her is natural and meaningful, but also strikes the heart. For her absence is highlighted in this setting. We want to thank the Jewish Federation for granting us the opportunity to mourn our mother's death with our Winnipeg family and with the Winnipeg community. In our home, she found constant grounding and support in her partnership with her father. They were complementary to each other. Their differences in character only served to strengthen each of their interests. 
to us, her sons, she always looked with pride and a sense of fulfillment. Whether the commitments we chose aligned with her sensibilities or were completely foreign to her. To her, it didn't matter what path we chose in life, as long as we felt that it is meaningful to us. Her ideology never became indoctrination. Also, in our personal mischief, whatever trials and tribulations we would put her through, we always had a hug waiting for us and a deep, sometimes tedious, dialogue so she could understand and through that we could understand our motives and inner psyche. <clears throat> it is said that the older you grow, the harder it is to form friendships. This was not the case with our mother. Through all her life stages, she knew how to form deep and meaningful connections and was as close with friends she made in the past decade as with lifelong friends from her youth. Whether riding with her biking group in the berry fields, celebrating birthdays with her close-knit group on the kibbutz, visiting and hosting old, old friends from North America, or since our father passed, traveling the world with cherished friends from her New York days. Her relationships served as an unending source of energy and enthusiasm. She was also a devoted member of the Kibbutz Be'eri community, where she grew deep roots. Be'eri allowed her the freedom to pursue a fulfilling career, but she also saw a mission in remaining deeply involved in Kibbutz responsibilities and pushing for initiatives that would harness the power of the community to contribute to social change. As we remember our mother here, we also want to remember the countless friends and community members that were lost with her and the devastation the community has faced. Though we both left Be'eri years ago, we still consider it our home. We are sure that it will be rebuilt for hope grows even in the darkest hour. It seeps through the cracks of loss and destruction. And so it is with our mother's death. Her memory commands us to keep hoping and striving for a peaceful and prosperous future to all. As a first step in that direction, we are establishing a fund in her name that will grant awards to women with outstanding achievements in the promotion of peace, shared society between Jews and Arabs in Israel, and policy making. We miss her immensely and are grateful for the time we had together. I'd like to now call on Vivian's sister, Rachel Gamliel, to say a few words. My sister Vivian was just that. She was a sister, a mother, a safta, a daughter, a cousin, and an aunt. She was my ally, my confidant, and my hero. We did a million ordinary things together, but to me, they were all extraordinary. To me, it is surreal to be speaking to all of you about my sister and to hear the accolades that have been written and spoken about her these past few months. She always believed that the smallest of actions could result in the greatest achievements. 
She loved being the tour guide of the Negev, proudly showing off her kibbutz to ambassadors, diplomats, politicians, family, and friends. She believed that women in the kibbutz could do any and all jobs that they desired. We were similar in that way. She was in charge of construction in kibbutz Gezer, and I drove a tractor in the cotton fields and orange groves in kibbutz Palmachim. She also loved hiking around the country, biking in her fields, playing piano, passionate about her relationships with her friends, and most of all, spending time with her four grandchildren. She loved discussing with me different designs for birthday cakes she would make for them, whether they were trains, dinosaurs, or skateboards. We took a couple of Schwester-only holidays. We met up in San Francisco and hiked along the North Shore, rode the local buses with our dedicated maps, and took the ferry on a whim to check out a little island community. This past July, we met up in Niagara on the lake, where we took a 20-kilometer bike ride through the vineyards of the area, drinking and laughing the whole way. Her desire for peace was ingrained in her very being. She held on to the hope that it could happen, because without that hope, she could not have carried on with the work that she did. My family has received countless messages from around the world, from those who believed in her, who joined her path towards cooperation amongst all people, and were touched by her positive attitude. You would need to search through many pictures to find one of Vivian not smiling broadly. Vivian meant the world to me. We were very close, not only as sisters, but as best friends. She lives inside of me, in my heart, and I find it impossible that I will never speak with her or see her again. We are all devastated, not only with the loss of this international peace activist, but as an integral part of our family. I am heartbroken. like to call on Cheryl Barish, longtime friend of Vivian, to say a few words. As time passes, we come to realize that every so often, we are faced with an experience that we never ever would have anticipated in our life. Tonight is such an experience. There has been an incredible outpouring of love and support for Vivian. People from different corners of the world knew her or knew of her and have expressed their outrage, their devastation, and their deep and heartfelt love. This is another testimony to the amazing human being that touched so many lives. <clears throat> January 24, 1966. Dear Cheryl, I have no yesterdays. Time took them away. Tomorrow may not be, but I have today. 
in the chapter in this book on friendship, it says, silence makes the real conversation between friends. Not the saying, but the never needing to say is what really counts. This book was given to me by Vivian on my 17th birthday. It's called The Treasure Chest, and obviously I have treasured it my entire life, because I still have it, and I still use it. The year is 1964, and a 15-year-old Vivian stands before her junior high graduating classmates and friends and family and presents her valedictory address. She quotes a favorite poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson, a verse that we both loved a lot. Yet all experience is an arch, where through gleams the untraveled world, whose margin fades forever and forever as I move. <clears throat> a group of friends sit among the audience and absorb the amazing words of our classmate. Some of us are closer than others, but all of us are navigating our teenage years by connecting with each other in different ways with our various interests. We were oblivious at that moment to the fact that 60 years later, we would all still be a part of each other's lives. Some are closer than others to this day, and a few of us still have daily contact and that undeniable, undeniable sisterly bond. But we are all connected by our youth and by our deep love for one another. In the past month, we have been reaching out to hear each other's voices and to share the feeling we have of being broken. We were once a group of 10, now we're eight. Some are present tonight, and others are here through the power of streaming online. Vivian and I formed an undeniable bond all those years ago that carried us through geographical distance and very diverse paths in life. Once we did reconnect with each other, the years melted away immediately. <clears throat> the strength and the connection that we always had was as strong as ever. We had so many years and so many lifetimes ago to talk about, and we spoke about many things, but that ever important silence between friends was always there, and we could always get to the heart of the matter. We both enjoyed, I'm sorry, together as young girls, we both had an unusual love of words and expression of thought. We both enjoyed the drama club and representing the school as a debate team. We both very actively participated in the BBYO youth group with excitement and passion as we each took our different positions. We understood each other completely and we had so much fun. As teenagers often do, we expressed it to each other as, you are my other me. <laughs> but there was one very clear and very profound difference. Vivian was destined for greatness. Along with so many of her other amazing attributes, she had an innate flair for leadership and for always connecting with others. She had a passion for what she believed and a great strength of conviction. Justice, equality, harmony, and the right for every human being to live comfortably and freely were always part of her endeavors. She had a great thirst for knowledge. She had the tenacity to never give up on a cause. She was very gentle and sweet and kind and loving, but 
always willing to step forth to fight and to defend her beliefs. We both moved forward through that arc, and when Vivian visited her family in Winnipeg after she had moved to Israel, and once I had moved back to Winnipeg, she always connected when she came home. I think there were probably two of us, other than her family, who she always dearly wanted to be with, that she contacted every time she came home. Whenever it was possible for us, we would get together and spend a few hours, and it was always as though not a day had passed. We connected as we always had with our hearts and souls. We had the ability to get to the heart of things. I have a sense of pride tonight to believe that I was somewhat instrumental in her developing her great ability to create some difficulty between having conversations with her, friend, with her sons later on in life. We never missed each other's birthdays. They were one week apart. Vivian was on February 2nd. I would sometimes refer to her as Punxsutawney Viv. That would always be our opportunity to summarize our lives, to philosophize, and to share once again. The juxtaposition of how Vivian lived her life and how it was ripped from her will forever be incomprehensible to me. Vivian, you are a hero. Your mission and your passion will be carried forth by your many followers. I believe that you have long, at long last, found that place where true humanity, harmony, kindness and peace can actually exist. <clears throat> if you'll indulge me for just a couple more minutes, I would like to read to you the very last birthday email I received from Vivian in 2022. Dearest Cheryl, you know, each year we find it hard to get our heads around the fact that we've grown yet another year older, but there's a huge discrepancy between the chronological number and how we actually feel, and that never disappears. That's a good thing, of course, and I hope it stays that way for years to come. Nevertheless, it's still daunting because there's no escaping the fact that time continues to fly by and there's still so much that we want to do. At least that's true for me. So I guess it behooves us to appreciate what we have and to live our lives to the fullest. Not always easy considering the mess the world is in and with no end to the stupidity of some of the leaders. It's all truly baffling. So in spite of the really frightening upheaval here in Israel, which is getting tens of thousands of protesters onto the streets every week, our red anemones are coming into season. And the beauty of nature fills my heart and spirit. My eldest grandchild is turning nine this week. And he's not yet prepared to say he's too old for a theme cake from his savta. That's me. So the joy of filling his wish makes me happy. I hope this past year has been good to you and the coming year is full of good health and joy from your loved ones. Happy birthday, my lifelong friend. Much love, Vivian. I'd like to ask everyone to now rise, and we're going to recite a number of prayers. 
Rabbi Khalil Rose of Eitz Chaim Congregation will lead us in Kel Male Rachamim. Before I, I chant the El Malei Rachamim, just give me an opportunity to, to be a good son and offer my condolences to the whole family from my parents, Rabbi Neil and Carol Rose, who wrote this. Vivian Silver was both a chemist and a magician, always bringing diverse groups and communities together to create something entirely new something full of promise and hope. Vivian's curiosity and interest in diversity was apparent when she befriended the Sisters of Sign, a congregation of religious Catholic sisters dedicated to promoting greater understanding between Christians and Jews. Vivian's peace and humanitarian work continued in her retirement. I think everyone knows her legacy. And I want to say to her sons in particular, during the second intifada, I was living in Jerusalem and I volunteered with the Jalin Bedouin just outside of Malé Adumim. And the kids, mostly I went to play soccer with the kids and teach them English. And they said to me, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Canada. And there was an older woman in the crowd close to us who said, do you know Vivian? And I had no idea who they were referring to, nor did I want to explain that not every Canadian knows one another, but it was in fact your mom. El male rachamim shochein bamromim hamtseim enuchan echona tachat kanfei ashkina b'malot kedoshim otorim kezora ki emazirim Ed nishmat aviva tamara Bat meir v'shoshana shalcha le'olama Began eden dehe menuchata Ana balarachamim hastireha besetek nafecha le'olamim Utsror v'itsror chayim ed nishmata Adonai hu nachlata V'tanuach b'shalom ha'mishkava v'nomar, Amen. Rabbi Anibal Mas will lead us in a psalm, and immediately afterwards, Vivian's brother, Neil Silver, will recite Kaddish and we'll all say it together. Shir l'malot Esa ena ele arim, me a in yavo esri, esri me imadonai, o se chama im varets, aliten la motragleja, alianum shomereja. In a loyal Meloishan, Shomer Israel, Adunai Shomerecha, Adunai Tlechal Yad Yeminecha, Yoma Mashem Shloikeka. Yareach v'alayla Adonai Yishmor chamikol ra Yishmor et nafshecha Adonai Yishmor et zeitecha Uvoecha Meata v'adola It gadal vit kadash meraba. Balma divrach yute vamlich machute. 
Damiran ba'alama v'imru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim alenu v'ako Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom v'imru mav. Hu yase shalom alenu v'ako Yisrael v'imru amen. The prayer for the state of Israel, Rabbi Khalil Rose. Vinu Shabashamaim, Tsu Israel, the Goalo, Barech at Medinach Israel, Reshit Michat Gulatenu, Hagen Alea, Bevrat Hazdecha, Ufros Alea, Sukat Shlomecha, Ushlach Urcha, Vamitha Lurashea, Sarea Vioatzea, Vitaknem Beza Tova Milfanecha, Hazek, Jide, Migine, Eretz Kotchenu, Van Hilem, Eloheinu Yeshua, Vater Nitzachon Tatrem, Vinatata Shalom Ba'aretz, Vesimchat Olam Liyoshvea, Vinomar Amen. Prayer for the Israel Defense Forces. Misha Berach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov, Veti Motenu Sara, Rivka Rachel Veleya, Uyivarechet Chaylei Tzva Hagana Li Yisrael, Homdim Al Mishmar Atzenu, Vare Elohenu, Migvul Halevanon Vad Min Man Mitzraim, Umin Hayama Gadolad Levoha Rava, Bayabasha Baviru Vayam, Yitena Dunayet Oivenu Hakamim Alenu Nigafim Lifnehem, Hakadosh Baruchu Yishmor Vyatzil et Chayalenu Mikol Tsaravet Sukha, Mikol Nego Machala, Vishlach Brachavat Slacha Bechom Asey Dehem, Yad Berson Enu Tachtehem, Vyatrem Becheter Yeshua, Vateret Nitzachon, Vikuyam Bahema Katuv, Ki Adonai Elohechem Haolechim Achem, Lilachem Lachem Imoivechem, Leoshiat Chem, Venomar Amen. He who blessed our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our mothers Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. May he bless the fighters of the Israel Defense Forces who stand guard over our land and the cities from the border of, the, of Lebanon to the deserts of Egypt and from the great sea unto the approach of the Arava, on the land, in the air, and on the sea. May the Almighty cause the enemies who rise up against us to be struck down before them. May the Holy One, blessed be He, preserve and rescue our fighters from every trouble and distress and from every plague and illness. And may He send blessing and success in their every endeavor. May He lead our enemies under our soldiers' sway and may he grant them salvation and crown them with victory. And may there be fulfilled for them the verse, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you to battle your enemies to save you. And let us all say, Amen. I'd like to call on Al Ben Arosh, Jewish Child and Family Service CEO, to recite the prayer for the redemption of the captives. מי שברך אבותינו אברהם יצחק ויעקב, יוסף משה וארון דוד ושלמה, ואת אמותינו שרה רבקה רחל ולאה, הוא יברך וישמור וינצור את נדרי צבא ההגנה לישראל ואת השבויים בתוך שאר אחינו בית ישראל, הנתונים בצרה ובשביה. בעבור שהקהל הקדוש הזה מתפלל בעבורם, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא רחמים עליהם ויוציאם מחושך וצל מוות ומוסרותיהם ינתק וממצוקותיהם יושיעם ושיבם מהרה לחק משפחותיהם 
יודו לאדוני חסדו ונפלאותיו לבני אדם וקוים בהם מקרא שכתוב ופדויי אדוני ישובון ובאו ציון ברינה ושמחת עולם על ראשם ששון ושמחה ישיגו ונשאו יגון ואנחה ונאמר אמן. May the one who blessed Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, David, and Solomon, and our mother Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, may he bless, watch, and guard those missing from the Israel Defense Forces and the captives, among others of our brethren of the House of Israel, that are situated in distress and in captivity on account of the con this congregation's praying for them May the Holy One grant mercy upon them, take them out from darkness and gloom, break their chains, redeem them from their ordeals, and return them quickly to the comfort of their families. Let them praise the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds for the children of man. And through them, let the verse be fulfilled, and the Lord's ransom shall return and come with shouting to Zion, crowned with joy everlasting. They shall attain joy and gladness, while sorrow and sighing flee. And let us say, Amen. Please be seated. Today is the final day of Chanukah. I just heard on the news today that the Chanukiot of Kibbutz Be'eri were transported to Washington, D.C. And many of those Chanukiot, of course, no longer have owners. And they were lit in the city of Washington. I want to share with all of you how Maimonides ends his compendium of the laws of Chanukah. After enumerating dozens of laws, he ends his work with the following words, the very last words of the laws of Chanukah. Peace is great, for the entire Torah was given to bring about peace in the world. As Proverbs states, its ways are pleasant ways, and all its paths lead to peace. It's shocking that Maimonides would choose to end the laws of Chanukah speaking about peace. The paradox is great. Chanukah is the holiday that celebrates war and the military victory of the Maccabees against the Greeks. And yet Maimonides ends his work by speaking about peace. And the message is very clear. Sometimes war is inevitable, but peace is and has always been Judaism's primary goal. The Jewish nation never chooses war. War chooses us. And on October 7th, war chose us. When necessary, our people will fight to defend each other and to defend our homeland. And our enemies will feel our full force but our hearts and our minds will always be directed to peace. Vivian dedicated her life to the Jewish cause and mission of peace. She wanted to build a better world. Vivian is gone, but her dreams live on. May her soul be bound in the eternal bond of life, and may we all say, Amen. To close our event, I'd like to invite the CEO of the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, Jeff Lieberman. Good evening. Your presence here tonight, your support and commitment to honoring Viv Vivian Silver's legacy have made this evening truly special. I want to extend my deepest gratitude to each one of you 
who took the time to join us in commemorating Vivian's life, work, and lasting impact. I want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to Jonathan and Chaim Zagan and Neil and Jemmy Silver for coming to Winnipeg and making the, making the memorial service so special for all of us, and to Rochelle Gamliel for all of her help in organizing this service during a, ver a very difficult time for her. To Vivian's family, we want you to know that our entire community stands alongside you, offering our support and strength. Vivian's life was an embodiment of dedication to the pursuit of peace. She was a visionary, a tireless architect of bridges between communities, who saw opportunities to foster understanding and unity amid the broader conflicts between Israelis and Palestinians. Vivian's unwavering commitment to peace building and her relentless efforts to creating connections between these two peoples will forever stand as a testament to the person she was. I was in Israel on a solidarity mission a couple of weeks ago, and everywhere we went, people were talking about Vivian. Her impact is incredible. Although Vivian is no longer with us, it is our hope that her wish for peace will remain alive and will someday become reality. There has been a dedicated group of individuals who tirelessly work behind the scenes to make this event possible. I would like to thank Rochelle Gamliel, Rabbi Benarash, Sharon Graham, Abby Flackman, and Adam Levy for organizing this memorial. As our evening nears its conclusion, it's my hope that we will carry Vivian's legacy within us and her commitment to peace and justice be a guiding force in our lives. Let her compassion and determination to build bridges inspire us to foster understanding and harmony in each of our lives. Thank you all once again for being part of this touching tribute to a remarkable soul. May Vivian's legacy live on in our hearts as we set our sights on a brighter, more peaceful future for all. Please rise as I welcome Aaron Graves and Hatikva. Thank you everyone for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please stay standing for the departure of the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba. <laughs> 